Being that Razer bought Nextbit last year, it's not surprising that the Razer phone looks superficially similar to the Nextbit Robin. Build quality is fantastic, it's chunky, solid, and feels like a quality product through and through. It has a fairly unique square design with only slightly rounded edges, and is made from matte black aluminium. This is the same matte black as Razer's line of gaming laptops, and it is the only colour offered here. The finish is nicely resistant to fingerprints, and the logo is laser etched and recessed on the back of the phone. The antenna lines are made low key and hidden quite well too. The buttons on the Razer phone are rather small and feel quite mushy. This isn't great and I would rather that they were more clicky for that extra tactile feedback. The power button includes a fingerprint reader, which is something Apple should have done as a backup on the iPhone X personally. Razer are toting this as a gaming phone and it's clear that they haven't misled anyone on that score. Audio wise it has huge front facing speakers providing simply the best audio quality ever in a smartphone. With no distortion and a nice amount of bass even when cranked up to maximum volume, these speakers are so loud that they will be more than enough for your entire room. Each speaker comes with its own amplifier and Razer have taken care to ensure the audio sounds great both in front and behind the phone. If you set the alarm clock to max it will scare the crap out of you when it wakes you up, so please be careful with this one. Razer own the company, so you can be assured that the audio is both Dolby Atmos and THX certified. We did compare the audio of the Razer phone with the audio of the iPhone X, and we hope even filtered through whatever audio device you're listening on, you can get some idea of the difference. There are no headphones in the box, but of course you can use your own or buy the Razer Hammerhead in-ear gaming headset to make a nice little audio ecosystem. For calls, the audio continued to impress and speech was clear and easy to hear. Although it has no headphone jack, they do have the courage to supply an adapter. Razer, you so courageous. It's in the screen, however, that this phone really shows its stuff. With a 5.7 inch quad HD display boasting an out of the box resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels, this is the first handheld 120Hz IGZO IPS display in the world. Not bad for a company's first phone. Not just for gaming, but anything you want to view will look fantastic on here. And with its ultra motion tech meaning zero lag or stutter, everything will be buttery smooth. Even scrolling through lengthy lists is very easy on the eyes. The display is not OLED as it is 120Hz, but it has a wide colour gamut and the colours look vibrant and clear. I've seen lots of people complaining about the phone's auto brightness setting, but I have to say, in my experience, I think it's fine. The display defaults to a more normal 90Hz, but when you change it up to 120Hz, you'll be blown away. Sadly, you can't see this on the video, but if you get your chance to go into a store and look for yourself, then wow, you will be impressed. The screen and the beauty it contains is adequately protected by tough Gorilla Glass 3. Under the hood, the Razer phone boasts a Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 with integrated Adreno 540 GPU. It features 8 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM clocked to 1866MHz, which frankly is insane. Rounding things off with 64 gig of internal storage and up to 2 terabytes maximum storage through the micro SD slot, these specs are up with the best we've seen in a phone. For power, the phone contains a whopping 4000 milliamp battery and comes included with a braided USB Type-C charging cable along with a Qualcomm Quick Charge 4 Plus quick charger included in the box. The battery life is simply amazing and something other brands need to use as a bit of a measurement from now on. Come on Apple, come on Samsung, you can do it. The phone runs close to stock Android, it doesn't feel bloaty at all, and although there are a few additions such as custom display settings and a game booster, none of it feels over the top. The do not disturb setting is great as it stops any and all notifications while in full screen gaming on a per game basis. It comes with the Novo Launcher Prime as standard which is a great move and something welcomed by Android power users. 
Games included by default are Titanfall, World of Tanks and Arena of Valor, but I found Real Racing 3 to really harness the potential of that amazing display. The only real features that don't match up in terms of quality are the cameras. These aren't great, and as a gaming phone, do they really need to be anyway? We have two 12 megapixel dual cameras on the rear of the phone, one of them being a 12 megapixel AF f1.75 wide lens and a 12 megapixel AF f2.6 zoom lens. Both feature phase detection autofocus and a dual tone LED flash. The white balance isn't great here and the dynamic range is decidedly poor. Exposure was also iffy depending on the HDR settings and the focus was oddly soft throughout. The front facing camera isn't great either at 8 megapixel f2.0 but we hear this is actually a software issue and more testing may show us better results in the future. Connectivity wise we have 802.11a, b, g, n and ac. We also have bluetooth 4.2 and nfc but sadly no qi charging. The Razer branded sim eject tool is so cool and a nice touch too so thanks for including that. Sadly a bad point is the vibration motor, it's ratty and horrible. It sounds kind of broken and there's just something strange about it. The phone's weight clocks in at 194 grams and you can choose between a rugged or a silicon case if you do want to protect it. So overall, this is a truly fantastic product from Razer. Both the audio and the display blew us away and the only major dip in quality is with the onboard cameras, but who really needs those in a gaming phone? Apart from a few minor niggles like its lack of water resistance and its wireless charging capability, Razer's first foray into the smartphone market is one to be admired. It feels more like a scaled down tablet like the Nvidia Shield with phone functions rather than a phone with extra features. And that's a good thing. After trying the incredible 120Hz display, you really won't want to settle for anything less again. And we hope this feature really takes off in the market in general. As an avid iPhone user, if I was to make the switch to Android, I honestly think this would be the one. But please Razer, fix them cameras.